Okay. So we're getting a few more votes in. It looks like uh, for the most part, this is what a, your organizational alignment looks like. Um, also, for some of you, you said, yes, exactly. This is exactly what it looks like. And uh, in the sales world, this is called the trap setting question. Um, for me, I asked this in particular because what I think you should be doing is what we're doing here at Drift, which is you have an organizational alignment directly with support and customer support is part of every product team. So it's not going to be one of those things where you uh, are two separate entities, you partner together when needed, um, you're all part of the same team. And, you know, support is directly aligned with that uh, product structure right there. And so what does this look like in effect? And this is how we've structured it here at Drift is that support is embedded directly into those product teams. Um, to give you an example for us, we've got different teams that focus on different features and areas of our chat platform. And so using a few of them as examples, we've got a routing team. So they focus on how routing takes place in our product or playbooks, which is where you design and configure Drift Chat to kind of work on your website. We've got, those are just two separate teams, but I've got a direct product specialist on my support side who's embedded directly in there. Um, and what do they do? Uh, right now they attend regular meetings where they talk about new features that are coming out. They talk about product updates uh, and they focus on the bugs that are existing right now. And so in those meetings, uh, that product specialist advocates for fixes of those bugs based on different factors. So is it impacting a renewal, a go live? Uh, is this high ARR customer? Is there a lot of volume tied to this? Um, and the reason why this one's really important is just going to be, we're going to talk about aligning your escalation process, but uh, from a product organization perspective, you can label different things with different priorities. You can build out your own scores, um, but you've also got that human element of what's going on and what should they be focusing on. And by being directly in that meeting and advocating for that, you have a more of a say so into exactly what's taking place, what they need to focus on for that week or the next week's sprint. Um, if you work in different cycles, you know, is that going to be in the next month's release? But just being able to be there and talk through those as they come up. Um, you can say, here's what we're noticing, and this is what we, we're asking for you to focus on. Um, in addition to that, they're able to share feedback regularly on different trends and issues that are identified. Uh, because if, you, if your, I guess, support structure and product teams work together like mine always have, um, there's a lot of focus on the bugs, but that's just half the story, uh, maybe even a quarter of the story. It all depends. But you're looking at it where there's also other questions and issues that your team is answering that never make their way to product. Um, and that's where that product specialist who's aligned directly to that product team has a lot of insight to give. So they can talk through, here are all the chats, here are all the cases or tickets that we've seen, um, here are all the internal questions that we're gonna have to do training on uh, and make sure that what we're doing here is uh, telling them, this is the problem area that our customers are seeing and what can we do to get ahead of it? Uh, and then the last piece is just, if you have a product specialist who's tied to that squad or that team, they can be involved in that product documentation as the known expert. And this one's really important to me is the idea that you've got, uh, and no offense to anyone, if you've ever been on the product team, um, engineers and product uh, uh, focused people are not always gonna understand completely what is a customer asking or what is their insight or what lens do they have? Whereas if you're in the support world and you're in that customer facing team, you're gonna have a lot more insight into here are the problems that typically come up Here's what we need to include in the documentation and they can partner with a technical writer. Um, but, you know, it's the, one of those ideas of you're going to look at it from an engineer and a product perspective of here's the product that I design and here's how I'm going to explain it. And then from a support perspective, it's here's how I'm going to use it. And so if you've got that direct tie in, you can kind of avoid some of those pitfalls about releasing or updating information that you send out to customers that is focused more on kind of the feature versus the how to and the use case.